Hello fellow gaijins, welcome back to the Japanese Basics for Beginners series. This is episode 5 and again today we have a lot of stuff to cover so let's get straight into it. As always, let's start this off by talking about the sentence from the end of the last episode. Watashi no inu wa issai desu. Anata no inu wa nansai desu ka? Watashi no inu wa sansai desu. Kawaii desu ne. Actually, it was not really a sentence, but more like a conversation between two people, but I am sure you noticed that. The second sentence was soba o tabemashita. Now let's start breaking this down real quick. The first sentence is watashi no inu wa issai desu. Watashi no inu means my dog. The no just connects those two nouns and makes a correlation between them. Issai means one year old, as you should know from the last episode. Wa just marks watashi no inu as the topic of the sentence and connects it with issai. And this just makes the whole sentence polite. The sentence as a whole means my dog is one year old. The same person then follows up with the question Anata no inu wa nansai desu ka? Anata no inu just means your dog instead of my dog. Now the special thing about this sentence is nansai desu ka. You can probably guess this by just looking at it, but nansai means how old. Nan comes from nani, and in some instances nani gets shortened to nan. We will talk about nani and all those strange things that happen with it in the next episode. Well, again, just connects these things, and now it means how old is your dog? The ka makes it into a question. Person B answers with Watashi no inu wa sansai desu. It's again the same drill as with the sentence A, so I will not explain the sentence because it should be self explanatory. Person A answers with Kawaii desu ne. When you put ne at the end of a sentence like this, it usually means that you want the person you're talking to to agree with your opinion. Or you want to show the person that you think that she thinks the same thing as you and that you agree with what she thinks. That was kind of confusing. It's basically something that the person you're talking to didn't say out loud, but you agree with it because you know that this person thinks the same thing. It's kind of nuance based and there are other hiragana that you can put at the end of the sentence, but I will not go into this any further because I will for sure make a video about this in the future. Soba o tabemashita, the second sentence, just means I ate soba. Tabemashita just means tabemas, but in past tense, so I ate. I want to increase the amount of kana we have per episode from 5 to 10 so that we really get away from those romaji as fast as we can. If we can really pull this through, we will be done with katakana by episode 7 and we can really start focusing on hiragana, which is actually the most important alphabet. Go through the flashcards and try to study the katakana as much as possible. In the flashcard sets, I will probably make some additional katakana exercise sets, different sentences that you can read and just translate with the flashcards so on the back is the English translation and you will have to read the Japanese sentence in katakana with hiragana particles and just the grammar up till now. Today I want to cover the katakana that start with S and the katakana that start with R. Let's start with the ones that start with S. Sa Sa Se Se Shi Shi So So Su, su, ra, ra, re, re, ri, ri, ro, ro, ru, ru. Keep in mind that the R in Japanese is something between an L and an R, more like an R but still it has a very very slight L sound in there. I will look for an audio recording of an R said by a Japanese native, so that you can really learn the pronunciation well. La, ri, ru, le, ro. I want to get through the vocabulary and the kanji as fast as we can because it can be really hard to wrap your head around the grammar that we will discuss today. Today I have 10 vocabulary words for you. Omoshiroi. Omoshiroi. Kyo. Kyo. 
明日明日昨日昨日いついつここここそこそこあそこあそこどこどこでもでも漢字。Those are the four kanji of today's lesson. As last time, the stroke orders are in the description. I want to talk about the kanji namae real quick because this is the first kanji that has two kanji for one meaning. Usually, when one word uses two or more kanji, the onyomi reading is used. On the other side, when the word uses only one kanji, it uses the kunyomi reading. This is not a real rule, but more like a rule of thumb because some words use kunyomi reading even though they are two words, and there are also single kanji words that use onyomi reading. So, I guess you just have to learn those, but for Most of the time, it is onyomi reading when there are two kanjis together, and kunyomi when there is only a single kanji for a word. In case of namae, it's actually the kunyomi reading, even though it is two kanjis together, but I guess you just have to learn it that way. Now, in our case, we learn it from vocabulary to kanji anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference for you if it is onyomi or kunyomi, but if you would learn from kanji to vocabulary, it would make it hard to just read it without knowing the actual meaning. If it wasn't irregular to this rule of thumb, of course. Finally, we're through all that stuff, and let's start with the grammar. The thing I was talking about before, that even Japanese people do wrong sometimes, is the difference between ga and wa. The particle ga is actually really, really similar to the particle wa. Or it seems that way. They are by no means the same thing, but often they are interchangeable depending on the sentence and the context. Also, I need to correct myself on one thing I did wrong in the first episode of the series. I said wa marks the subject, but actually, it doesn't really mark the subject. But the topic of the sentence. Now, what exactly is the topic of a sentence? I'm gonna get into that in a second, but it's kind of hard to explain because we don't have this principle. We only have the subject, and that's it. That's why this grammar part is a nightmare for Japanese learners. Because it just confuses our brains. I have a few rules of thumb for you so that you can get into this more easily. And with time, you will get used to hearing ga or wa in different situations and you will learn the difference by just getting used to it. But the rules of thumb I will tell you about in this video will definitely help you to at least understand what the difference is between those two particles. Now, what exactly is the topic of a sentence and why is it not the same as the subject? Sometimes it is the same as the subject. But sometimes it is not. It is actually quite easy to explain this, but understanding it is harder. The topic is non grammatical. That means that it has nothing to do with the verb or the sentence grammar in general, but it just explains to the person you're talking to what exactly the topic is of this sentence, as the name suggests. Topic. The subject on the other side is connected to the verb and it says who does the action that the verb describes, so it is really connected to the whole grammar of the sentence. Now that we have distinguished those two things, we can start talking about ga and wa. So if wa marks the topic, ga marks the subject. Before we look at the differences in usage, I want to make an example of a sentence that actually can use both those particles interchangeably. I went there. This sentence can use one of the two, whichever it is, because it doesn't really have any context to anything else. So, the actual difference between ga and wa lies in the emphasis, context, and also the whole context of the conversation, not just of this single sentence. It sounds really difficult, but bear with me, I will make some examples that will clarify things a little more. Let's start by imagining a situation. There are two people talking to each other, and one person asks something. What did you eat? Nani o tabemashita? And that person answers with Watashi wa sandwichi o tabemashita. Sandwichi means sandwich in Japanese. Then he follows up with a question Who ate my sandwich? Now the person answers to this Watashi ga sandwichi o tabeta. As you've noticed, the first answer used wa, the second answer used ga. 
Why is that? A while back I found a really good trick online. I will leave the source to this trick in the description if I can find it. The trick is really really useful. Imagine those sentences side by side and you know what the question was. Now you take away the word that should be marked by the particle wa or ga respectively and you look if the sentence still makes sense. On the first answer, the sentence now is sandwichi o tabemashita. Does this make sense? It does. In cases like these, you want to use wa. On the other side, if you take away the watashi, does the sentence really still make sense? Let's see. Who ate my sandwich? And you just say, what do you even say? The only thing, the only thing that is left is ga tabemashita. But it doesn't say who ate the sandwich. This is the difference between ga and wa. The ga particle explains things like these. If a question is who ate my sandwich, you want to deliver a word that is a subject that has a connection to the word eating, which is the verb of the sentence. So ga is used when you want to make a correlation between those two words because the question was who ate my sandwich. So you want to deliver an adequate answer, which is a person. So if the person is not in the sentence, it doesn't make sense. In cases like these, you must use ga. By using this trick, you can find out if ga or wa should be used. This of course doesn't work 100% of the time, and I guess sometimes mistakes can be made with this trick, but at least it explains at a really basic level what the difference is between those two. So once more to really summarize this whole thing again, because it is kind of complicated and convoluted, but it's actually not that hard to explain. Ga just tells you who or what performs an action. Wa, on the other hand, just tells you what we are talking about. Another trick that works most of the time, especially if it is a long sentence, is when you already have a wa in the sentence, so the topic is already established, you cannot use wa again in this sentence. This is again just a rule of thumb. This is not always the case, but if wa is a topic marker and not just a thing that has to be there because of a word that always uses wa, then this rule is really accurate. Another really important thing about the ga particle is that a few words or verbs always use the ga particle instead of the o particle or any other particle. We have already learned one of them, which is suki. This is an adjective, not a verb. I just stress this again so you don't forget it. And with ski, you must always use ga. Just remember this. And there are some other words that we will see in the future that also always use ga. We talked about this far too long, so next grammar. <laughs> now the next grammar I want to discuss with you is the particle mo. This particle is really useful because it says to. You can say for example, me too. Mo is just used at the same place that wa or ga would be used. You just replace wa or ga with mo and instead of me in general, it becomes me too. If somebody says I will go to school, you can just answer with watashi mo. That just means me too. Kind of simple, but it is really, really effective in conversations because you can reply to things with me too, that person too, that there too, this too. Just use mo as you would use to. Say the word and then mo and it just becomes this too. The last thing I want to discuss with you in this lesson is the negative forms of verbs and of this. We will only talk about the polite forms for now. To make an affirmative mas into a negative mas, you just have to change mas into masen. Let's make an example. Tabemas becomes tabemasen. Ikimas becomes ikimasen. Kimas becomes kimasen. If it is in past tense, let's say tabemashita, then it becomes tabemasen deshita. Ikimashita becomes ikimasen deshita. So you just add a deshita at the end of the normal negative form of mas. When you have a sentence with des at the end, you can just change the des to ja arimasen. Very polite, but it works. Let's make an example. Is this a dog? Inu ja arimasen. It's not a dog. Kore wa computer desu ka? Computer ja arimasen. It's not a computer. If it were a computer, you could just say computer desu. If you want to change the ja arimasen into the past form, you can just add a deshita, the same as with the masen, and it will just turn into past tense. Are inu deshita? It was not a dog. We're finally finished with grammar, so let's take a breather and let's take a look at the example sentence or conversation I have for you today.
I hope this episode helped clarify a few things. The difference between ga and wa is very confusing and you shouldn't blame yourself if you don't understand it yet. I guess it's just a matter of practice and also being aware of those small and slight differences between the topic and the subject of a sentence. Anyway, let's just wrap this whole thing up. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, throw all your shurikens over that like button as always. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. At the moment, I am actually making daily videos. I don't know how long I can keep this up, so I might take a break of one or two days at weekends or something like that. But right now I am on full grind mode and I'm doing those videos every day. If you have any feedback, questions, suggestions, let me know in the comments, I read all of them. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Matane!